SmackDown kicks off with Damage Control coming out for a promo. They are of course joined by Asuka and Kairi Sane who are potentially full time additions but could also just be there for war games. It's a Drew McIntyre and Judgment Day situation in the simplest of terms. Road Dog is on commentary taking his turn to fill in for Corey Graves, an interesting choice but I'll give him a fair shot. Bailey takes all the credit for getting Asuka to join Damage Control saying that now with Kairi and Asuka they're the new and improved Damage Control. Io, Asuka and Kairi don't look happy after Bailey's diatribe on Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair and Shotzi. They talk in Japanese which Bailey doesn't understand and the insinuation is that there's someone in the ring who isn't part of the new damage control. Dakota reassures Bailey, saying Asuka hasn't been inducted yet so Bailey will do the honours. She gets on one knee and gives Asuka a t-shirt asking her to join which Asuka accepts. Dakota then relays Io's request which is for a war games match telling Charlotte, Bianca and Shotzi to find a fourth partner. They're interrupted by Shotzi's tank, there's nobody in it as Shotzi attacks from behind. Shotzi gets beat up but Charlotte and Bianca make the save. The brawl kicks off but in the end damage control end up on top as they throw the face team out of the ring to stand tall. What a wild opening segment. I'd like to remind you all to take the time to support the channel by subscribing. It's greatly appreciated and helps me out massively. Bianca has a go at Shotzi for being so reckless and tells Charlotte there's a fourth woman they can call. Charlotte says she will think about it. I wonder who that could be. Nick Aldis shows up to say they need to tell him who the fourth member is before the show ends. Aldis goes to his office where I swear I saw Cody Rhodes. It's not the best quality but that was Cody, right? First match of the night is a triple threat tag team match for a shot at the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. Participants are the Street Profits, the Brawling Brutes and Pretty Deadly. Butch accidentally broke kicks Ridge. Butch gets thrown out by Elton Prince who gets thrown out by the Street Profits. The Profits hit the revelation on Ridge and win their title shot. After the match Ridge is gutted he was accidentally kicked and storms away from Butch. Do you know what Ridge? It was obviously an accident. Dragon Lee takes on NXT's Axiom. Lee goes for a powerbomb but Axiom counters and spikes him with a Canadian Destroyer but only gets a two count. There's a Spanish fly off the top that again only gets a two. Lee wins with the Operation Dragon after a banger of a match. Santos Escobar is here for an in-ring promo. He says Rey Mysterio was his hero but realised everything Dominic Mysterio said about his father was right. Santos is mad that Rey stole his US Championship opportunity. He's mad Rey brought outsiders into the LWO like Carlito and chose Lito over Santos. Zelina Vega has heard enough as she comes out to confront Santos. She slaps Santos in the face and emotionally walks up the ramp where she's comforted by Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro. Those jobbers come to the ring where Santos asks if they're with them. They say no so he tells them to leave because they're dead weight. Tell him when he's telling lies. They do leave but Santos blasts them from behind and beats them down. They get saved by Carlito who chases off Escobar as Santos leaves through the crowd. Up next Grayson Waller takes on Cameron Grimes. Austin Theory is on commentary to everyone's disappointment. Theory takes a kick from Grimes as Waller almost breaks the lad's neck on the apron. Waller gets back in the ring to hit a flipping unprettier and win. The Bloodline are here for an in-ring promo. Obviously Reigns isn't here and probably won't be until Rumble season. Heyman wants to acknowledge Solo for his win over John Cena at Crown Jewel. Heyman goes on a ramp where his main point is we can all say goodbye to John Cena because he's never coming back and it's all thanks to Solo. They get interrupted by LA Knight who speaks to the Smackdown faithful. Knight runs down the Bloodline and says Roman is only champion because they've kept him champion but Knight promises to stomp out the Bloodline one by one. Knight of course goes one on one with Jimmy Uso right now. Knight wins with the BF and celebrates but gets cut off by Solo who comes down the ramp. Jimmy blasts Knight from behind and Solo nails a spike. Solo strips the announce table to put Knight through it but Knight gets saved by, yep, you guessed it, Cody Rhodes. What the hell is he doing here? Cody drives away Solo and then Jimmy, is he and Knight stand tall? Will Cody tell Knight you owe me one and recruit him for war games? Let me know what you think the reason for all of this was. Cody is of course then kicked out the building by Nick Aldis. Main event segment, Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair and Shotzi need to review their partner for war games. They accept the challenge and go to announce their partner but get interrupted by Damage Control who accuse Charlotte of bluffing saying she doesn't have a partner. Damage Control go to attack but the mystery partner is revealed to be Becky Lynch as she stands with her team and the brawl kicks off. It's wild this brawl, similar to what we've seen on Raw for the past few weeks. Charlotte and Io do stereo moonsaults off the top rope to the floor and stare down to end the show. 